Hello, everybody. Good day to you all. My name is Lu Wailun. Today, I would like to present you about the topic risk, safety, and accidents. The subtopic to be design for safety and criteria for safe design. Design for safety. The application of engineering and management principles, criteria, and techniques to optimize all aspects of safety within the constraints of operational effectiveness, time, and cost throughout all phases of the system life cycle. A planned, disciplined, and systematic approach to preventing or reducing accidents throughout the life cycle of the system. The primary concern is the management of risk, consists of the risk identifications, evaluation, elimination, and control. The second is true analysis, design, and management. Design safety principles. Safety should be designed as following. First, critical reviews of the system design identify hazards that can be controlled by modifying the design. Second, modifications are most readily accepted during the early stage of design, development, and test. Third, Previous design deficiency can be corrected to prevent their recurrence. However, safety requirements must be consistent with other program or design requirements. Firstly, the evaluation of the system design is a series of trade-offs among competing disciplines to optimize relative contributions. Secondly, safety competes with other disciplines, it does not override them. This diagram shows the process of safe design. So start from define the problem. Second, to analyze each solution. Following by select the best solution and then implement the chosen solutions and test the solutions. And lastly, to generate several solutions. I will explain more details in the next slide. Yeah, so basically each Engineering design includes some variations on the basic multi-step procedure for effectively and executing engineering design as following. As I mentioned before, okay, the first one is to define the problem. This is to include issue of the safety of the product. Number two, to generate several solutions. This is to multiply alternative design are created. Number three, to analyze each solutions. This is to determine the consequences of each design solution and the pros and cons. Number four, test the solutions. This is to determine whether it solves the problem. Number five is to select the best solutions. Engineer attempts to assess all the threats of required to obtain a successful final design. Number six, implement the chosen solutions. It's important to remember that safety considerations should be paramount and should have relatively higher weight than other issues. So this is very important that to minimizing the risk. There are many things that are makes this difficult task for the engineer. For example, design engineer often must deal in uncertainties. Besides, risk can only be expressed as possibilities. And also, the risk increased by rapid pace at which engineering design must be carried out. Then the prudent approach to minimizing the risk in the design is a gross role approach. So, to ensure that all the possibilities have been adequately explored, testing has been successful go through. Prudent and ethical. Spending a long time engineering a separate product must seem like a very expensive alternative during early in the design cycle. However, any unsafe products on the market ultimately leads to the lawsuits that are expenses to defense. So, the prudent and the ethical things to do such as below, to spend as much as time and expenses as possible upfront to the engineer to design correctly, following by to minimize the future risk and the injury subsequently, criminal or civil actions. Now we move to the topic of criteria for a safe design. Four main criteria that must be met to help ensure a safe design. First, minimum requirement. A design must comply with applicable laws. This requirement should be easy to meet, 
since legal standards of product safety are generally well known, are published and are easily accessible. Second, standard requirements. A design must meet the standard of accepted engineering practice. A design can't create that is less safe than what everyone else in the profession understands to be acceptable. An engineer must continually upgrade her skill by attending conference and a short course. Also, discussing issues with other engineers and constantly survey, surveying the literature and trade magazines for information on the current state of art in the, in the field. Third, alternative solutions. Alternative design that are potentially safer must be explored. This creativity can involve discussing design strategy with others in your field and brainstorming new alternatives with them. This requirement is also difficult to meet, since it requires a fair amount of creativity in seeking alternative solutions. The creativity can involve discussing design strategy with others in your field and brainstorming new alternatives with them. The best way to know if your design is the safest available is to compare it to other potential designs. Number 4. Creativity and Research the engineer must attempt to foresee potential misuse of the product by the consumer and must design to avoid this problem. An engineer should execute design in such a way as to protect even someone who misuses the product. Placing a warming label on the product is not sufficient and is not a substitute for doing the extra engineering work required to produce a safe design. Finally, once the product is designed, both prototypes and finishes devices must be rigorously tested. This testing is not to determine whether the products meet the specifications. It should also involve testing to see if the product is safe. It is essential for engineering design or safety system be tested to ensure that they work as intended. So refer to the following is a sample of questions that have been asked for final exam. Uh, I already highlight with the yellow color, so we can refer to the first question. Q5B, what are the criteria does the design engineer have to follow in order to ensure the products he designed are safe to use? This contribute for five marks. So the second question is, with example, discuss how engineering professionals who are involved in conflict of interest affect safety of engineering design. So that's all for my presentations. So you guys are welcome to feedback and comments if any. Thank you very much.